good day everyone. Uh, this is Professor Roger Flores, Associate Professor 4 of the Department of uh, Electrical Engineering of Central Mindanao University. So today we are going to continue our discussion with, to, with our subject E67. This is entitled, uh, or our E67 is Electrical System Design. And um, uh, chapter 2 here is uh, Wiring and uh, Protections. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, the title of our chapter, chapter 2, is uh, the wiring and uh, protection. Uh, we have uh, article 2.15, and this will discuss feeders. No? So the scope of this uh, article uh, uh, 2.15, sorry, 2.15 covers the installation requirements, overcurrent protection requirements, minimum size, and opacity of the conductors. Okay. So, not more than 600 volts. Minimum rating and sizes of the feeder or the conductor, the conductor that we're going to use to supply the brand circuit. Okay. So, it should be, shall have an opacity not less than required to supply the load as calculated. Of course, the minimum feeder circuit conductor size and so on and so forth. Okay, for um, the uh, the allowable opacity not less than the non-continuous load plus 125% of the continuous load. Okay, so that is the general rating for more than or for not more than 600 volts uh, system. Opacity relative to service conductors, fader conductor opacity shall not be less than that of the service conductor where the fader Conductors carry the total load supplied by service conductor with opacity of 55 ampere or less. Okay, dwelling unit or mobile home conductors, either conductor for individual dwelling units are mo or mobile homes need not be larger than service conductors. So, of course, uh, it should have to be coordinated with the uh, service conductor rating. Okay, so if it is uh, over uh, 600 uh, volts, okay, if it is over 600 volts, then uh, we have this consideration. Failure conductors over 600 volts shall be sized in accordance with the following. Okay, so we have this failure supply transformers. Of course, we have to determine that. Uh, transformer, supplying transformer. The capacity of failure conductors shall not be less than the sum of the num nameplate rating of the transformers. <laughs> okay. So, uh, when only transformers are supplied, so uh, utilization equipment, the capacity of feeders supplying a combination of transformers and utilization equipment shall not be less than the sum of the nameplate ratings of the transformer. Otherwise, uh, of course, uh, you, uh, it will not be lighted or there will be a uh, voltage drop uh, or uh, voltage fluctuation if uh, it is uh, above the uh, 
rating of your transformer. Okay, when a feather supplies continuous loads or any combination of continuous load and non-continuous load, the rating of the overcurrent device shall not be less than the continuous load plus 125% of the rating of the, the, that uh, continuous load. Okay, so consideration, area, square feet of the building or other structure supplied by its feeder. So you should have to draw the uh, diagram, show the diagram. The total calculated load before applying the demand factor, of course, with uh, the demand factor used, okay, the calculated load after applying the demand factors, okay, the size and type of conductors to be used. Okay, let's go back here. So, feather supplying 15 and 20 ampere receptacles branch circuit shall be permitted to be protected by a ground fault circuit interrupter or GFCI in lieu of the provisions for such interrupters. Okay, let's continue and proceed to, to Article 2.20, branch circuit feeders and service calculations. The scope here. So, this article provides... Uh, Requirements for calculating branch circuit feeders and service loads. Okay, so uh, calculations will be uh, voltages. Will be, um, of course, we have to consider this. Uh, uh, some of this uh, special uh, voltage rating now. So 115, uh, 208, 230. Uh, that is a uh, common to 347, 400, so on and so forth. But uh, we should have to consider also the uh, the uh, distribution utility because they have their own uh, uh, distribution voltage, no? So we should be always uh, coordinate with the, the local distribution utility, so that otherwise uh, we will uh, have a problem later in energizing our installation or our designs. So fraction of an ampere of an ampere, so. We have that uh, less than 0.5 such so fraction shall be permitted to be dropped. Okay, so lighting load for specified occupancies refer to table 2.20, 0.2, 0.3. Okay, floor area of each floor shall be calculated from the outside dimension of the building, dwelling unit, other area involved. Outside dimension, no? Outside dimension. But of course, Calculated floor area shall not include open porches, garages, or unused or unfinished spaces not adaptable for future use. So, um, in the consideration of the floor area, so do not include open ports or porches, garages, or unused or unfinished spaces which is not adaptable for any future use. Okay, so these are some of the, uh, this is the table of our general lighting loads by occupancy. So this is our uh, estimation, no? estimation. This is in volt ampere per square meter. So like for example, if you're going to uh, consider uh, schools here, how much is the uh, rated power, no? apparent power for the Classrooms of the school, so it is uh, more or less 33 volt ampere per square meter. Okay, so that is our uh, rating or assumption or allocation of power per square meter. Okay, so 33. So for example, if uh, we have uh, 1,000 uh, square meter classrooms, then you have to multiply it with 33. So we have this. Uh, 33,000 or 33 kBA. So that is our assumption. That is the rating of our uh, the power that you are going to consider in that classroom or that area. So we have this uh, specified uh, areas here of occupancy. Courtrooms, clubs, churches. Our churches, we need to have 11 uh, volt ampere apparent uh, power for uh, per square meter and so on so just go over with it and uh, all other uh, loads in any other occupancies so we have uh, here um, minimum load for its outlet for general use receptacles okay so if you are not so sure 
of our uh, expected load then in a way we know what is the uh, that area is all about uh, that is what is the purpose of that area so we have to consider all these things no? so specific uh, apply, apply appliances of our loads no? so the outlet for specific appliance or other load not covered in uh, section B later shall be calculated based on the amperating of that appliance okay so based on the actual like for example electric dryer some sort of electric cooking ranges no? so motor loads also uh, this is a specific uh, load so we have to base our computations our consideration in the actual rating of this uh, kind of uh, motor loads okay so luminous lighting fixtures okay consider the rating of that uh, fixture loads heavy duty lamp holders uh, which is calculated at a minimum of 600 volt amperes or 600 uh, la apparent powers show windows 200 volt amperes per uh, 300 millimeter show window that is our consideration our uh, power uh, uh, allow uh, allotted for the shoe window we have been uh, pair uh, 300 uh, millimeter of the shoe window so if you have fixed multi outlet assemblies so we have these uh, considerations receptacle outlets shall be calculated not less than 180 volt amperes for each single or for each uh, multi multiple uh, receptacle in one yoke or in uh, one uh, 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 what we call this one a uh, utility box no? so for example if uh, we have uh, two or uh, duplex convenience outlet so for this uh, duplex convenience outlet you must have to allow or allot uh, or 360 watts or uh, volt ampere sorry 360 volt ampere should be allotted for this uh, duplex convenience outlet if you have only one or single uh, convenience outlet then uh, you must have to uh, allot uh, 180 volt ampere okay so that is what you are going to do so if you can um, uh, determine wh where to place uh, our outlets convenience outlets then count how many outlets do we have then you have to consider 180 volt ampere for each uh, outlet that is your uh, considered uh, load in that specific broad circuits okay for dwelling uh, occupancies we have this uh, one family dwelling two family dwelling multi-family dwelling then you have to consider this uh, table calculations at two point of two Point twenty point two point three. Okay, so we have all these things here. Banks and uh, office buildings. First, uh, the computed load from other loads or occupancies, eleven volt amperes per square meter. Okay, so or one hundred eighty uh, volt amperes per outlet. So I think uh, I mentioned this one already, no? So, uh, we we'll just go over with this one later. So, feeder and service load calculations. So, uh, this is for the main feeder, the sub uh, feeder. So, this is the how you're going to calculate or determine the size of the feeder and uh, the size of the protection. So, calculated load of a feeder or service shall not be less than the sum of the loads of the brand circuit supplied after any applicable demand factors have been applied. Okay. So, it should not be applied the demand factor and it should not be uh, less than that of the sum of the loads or the load power. So, general for general lighting, demand factor specified of, that, of this table and for illumination, general illumination. Okay, so we have this type here, lighting load demand factors. If uh, we're going to apply demand factor for this table 2.20.3.3. So, this is the demand factor, no? So, apply this one in the computation of your feeder or determining your feeder uh, size and uh, 
the protection of your feeder. Okay, show windows also. This is how you're going to compute your uh, feather size and uh, tracking lightings. Okay, so for track lighting, other uh, other than dwelling units or gas or so we have this additional uh, load of 150 volt amperes shall be included for every 600 uh, volt amperes. Okay, so lighting or 600 lighting. Okay, fix electric space. Heating load shall be calculated at 100% of the total connected load okay so that's clear no? for that is for fixed electric space heating so there will be no demand factor for this 100 percent should be considered for the uh, feeder or service load current rating uh, for small appliance laundry so go back to table 2.20 0.3.3 laundry circuit so we have this one so try to allocate 1500 volt amperes will be included no so for two wire laundry brand uh, branch circuit so consider this one 1500 volt amperes for each of this uh, uh, load so the demand it shall be permitted to apply demand factor of 75 percent for its appliance load uh, of the nameplate rating of course uh, uh, four or more appliance fashion in place other than electric ranges, clothes, and because electric range, clothes, uh, dryers, space heating, they will have different uh, demand factors. Okay, so uh, do not include it here. Okay, so these are the uh, electric uh, clothes dryers to determine their, uh, uh, what do you call this one, the feeder. No? So it shall be either 5,000 watts or bigger. Or the nameplate rating, whichever is larger for its dryer to serve. So if you know the actual uh, load rating, then try to use the actual load rating. Okay. So anyway, I showed this one already for the demand factor of the uh, for the kitchen uh, heating appliance or specifically electric range. Okay, so let us now discuss the uh, outside branch circuit feeders. Huh? So uh, the scope of this uh, this uh, article is uh, it covers about the requirements for outside branch circuit and feeders run on or between building structure or pools on the per premises. So we have the overhead as illustrated here. So as you can see here, we have the the wire that connects or supply the, this building here, the other building here. Overhead branch circuit or feeder conductor. So this should be identified so that uh, this conductor will not uh, be uh, damaged by the passer or this uh, bus, for example, <laughs> these uh, trucks here. Huh? So within 3000 meter or 10 feet of any building or structures uh, other than supporting poles or towers open individual aerial overhead conductor shall be insulated or covered uh, it is expected that uh, our structure our pool will not be less than 10 feet okay but sometimes uh, the 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 height is uh, specified no but uh, generally it should not be less than 10 feet or 3 meters or 3000 uh, 3000 uh, millimeters okay so uh, conductor size and support so talking about overhead uh, spans okay overhead overhead uh, spans conductor shall not be smaller than the uh, following if it is uh, 600 volts nominal or less Okay, so our overhead uh, conductors that we're going to use is uh, 5.5 millimeter squared copper or uh, 8.5 millimeter squared for aluminum for spans up to 15 meters. So if the post between uh, the uh, conductor overhead is uh, aluminum, then it should not be less than 8.0. Um, mm squared or if uh, it is copper it should not be less than 5.5 millimeter 
Okay, so that is uh, 50 feet in length uh, span. Okay, so or 8.0 millimeter, uh, 8 millimeter squared if copper or 14 millimeter squared if aluminum for a longer span and less supported by as messenger wire. So anyway, um, we know what is a messenger wire, no? It is a it is a wire or a tie wire or a solid wire that will be uh, uh, that will support our conductor within this uh, span or longer span. So more than uh, more than uh, this uh, 15 meter then uh, try to use 8.0 millimeter squared uh, copper or 14 millimeter squared aluminum uh, size aluminum no if it is more than that uh, 15 meter or 50 feet uh, length okay so as it is illustrated here okay so for over 600 uh, volts nominal 14 mm squared copper or 22 millimeter squared aluminum for individual conductors and 8 millimeter uh, uh, squared copper and uh, for copper or, or 14 millimeter squared aluminum uh, were in cable. So as you can see here, no, if it is more than 15 millimeter, so try to use 8 millimeter squared copper or 14 millimeter squared aluminum. Our conductor here. So uh, if it is uh, a 15 meter span distance between this line then you can use 5.5 or 8.0 millimeter squared aluminum okay so these are some of the size specific uh, size specifications huh? overhead conductors for piston lighting shall not be smaller than 3.5 so if we have this lighting straight lighting so on so on no uh, should not be smaller than 3.5 uh, uh, mm squared or 2.0 mm diameter unless conductor are supported by messenger wires okay so in all spans exceeding 12 meter the conductor should be supported by a messenger wire or it uh, support no support lighting equipment installed outdoors so common neutral the capacity of the neutral conductor shall not be less than the maximum net calculated load current okay so that's very important 600 volts between conductors circuit uh, exceeding 277 volts nominal to ground not exceeding 600 volts nominal between conductors shall be permitted to supply the auxiliary equipment of electric discharge lamps okay so straight lightings you are allowed no you are allowed all multi-conductor cables or type MC, okay, uh, metallic sh uh, sheeted cable, uh, MC type cable, uh, we can use that one, as type uh, this uh, MI cable, well, in a way we can discuss, discuss that one later, no? in rigid metallic conduit, in cable trays or uh, cable bus, so we have this cable bus now, we are, so um, it could be a uh, below the ground no or uh, it will be at the surface level or above the surface level it should uh, we will be using cable tray or wireways or lyric metal metallic tubing and busways okay so circuit exits and uh, entrances so we have this uh, where outside branch and feeder circuits leave or enter a building the requirements is at uh, uh, 230.4.13 and 230.4.15 uh, uh, tables can be applied here okay so as you can see here um, um, this is the illustration so it's uh, very clear here that the service entrance should not be uh, within three feet at the window okay or building openings no or below no three feet below or above or uh, within so that is your service entrance so careful with that okay so uh, clearance from finished grid line 
or 600 uh, volts or less so this is the distance no so that is what we mentioned about uh, 3 meters or uh, more or less uh, 50 uh, we have that at uh, 3 meters or more or less mga 15 meters no so that is above the line so take note with that uh, illustrations separation from other circuit sorry so shall be separated from open conductors of other circuits or systems but not less than 100 millimeter or 4 inches so uh, and uh, conductor impulse shall have a separation of not less than 300 millimeter or one foot where not placed on rocks or brackets so it should be separated uh, with the conductors should be separated uh, one foot no not less than one foot so uh, it should not uh, placed uh, should not be placed on rocks or brackets so but of course if it is placed in rocks or brackets then of course uh, no problem about it okay so uh, horizontal climbing spaces not less than the following power conductors below communication conductors 750 millimeter so so that it will not affect the uh, the communication uh, channel no? so it should not be less than 750 uh, or conductors below 750 millimeter power conductors alone or above communication conductors 300 volts or less then uh, over uh, 300 volts, 750, uh, 3 inches. Okay. Must and supports. Okay, so uh, where a must is used for the support of final uh, final spans of feathers or brand circuits, it shall be of adequate strength or be supported by braces or guys to withstand and safety the strength is exposed by the overhead drops. So, this is just a violation, no? So, uh, only brand circuit or feather characters can be attached to a power mast. Okay, so we must have separate supports. We must have a separate support. Or, uh, it should not be, masts here should not be used as a support for power conductors. Okay, so... We must have to implement separate uh, support, uh, our attachments for our power supply. Uh, and let's now talk about clearance from ground. So as we mentioned a while ago, it is, I'm sorry, for a while. Uh, this is not, I mentioned uh, 15 feet, but uh, for 3 meters, it is more or less 10 feet. Okay. Where the voltage does not exceed 150 volts to ground and accessible to pedestrian only. So 3.7 uh, or 12 feet over residential property and driveways and those commercial areas voltage does not exceed 300 volts but if it is more than 300 volts then it it should be more than 12 feet or 3.7 4.5 meters or 15 feet for those uh, voltage exceeds 300 volts so it's very clear here that our conductor above the ground should be more than um, 4.5 meters or 15 feet if it is more than uh, 300 volts for from the ground okay over public streets alleys road uh, mar parking areas subject to truck traffic driveways then it should not be less than 5.5 meters or 18 feet otherwise it will be damaged and uh, okay so for trucks and other uh, big uh, vehicles that will pass by okay 7.5 or 24.5 feet over track rails or rail railroads so we have this uh, conductors of uh, not more than 600 volts nominal okay so as you can see here over conductors must maintain a vertical clearance of 8 feet above the surface of a roof so uh, Maintain that for a distance of at least three feet from the edge of the roof. Okay, so uh, we have this one, no? distance. So maximum six feet of conductors over roof, maximum four feet over roof. 
Okay, so this is how you're going to. Uh, okay, uh, install your mask, no? So that is inside. Okay, outdoor lamps. They shall be attached only to conductors of the standard type. So vegetation as support. Vegetation such as trees shall not be used for support for overhead conductor spans. So uh, because as we can observe. Uh, and uh, some of the dis distribution utilities, they use these uh, uh, trees and other vegetation as for their conductor supports. Okay, uh, it should not be used, no? That is illegal. More than one building or other structure, number of supplies, multi-wire uh, multi brand circuit shall be considered a single circuit. Okay, fire pumps, for this is special conditions, emergency systems, then we will discuss this later no? legally uh, required standby system optional standby systems power parallel power production systems so these are um, other structures no? so anyway there were some uh, other uh, chapter for this so we'll focus this talking about disconnecting means shall be provided for disconnecting all grounded conductors that supply for pass or pass through the building or structure so location install it at a readily accessible location either outside or inside nearest the point of entrance of the conductor manually or power operatable opera, operatable uh, disconnecting uh, construction simultaneous opening of pools disconnect uh, disconnection of ground conductors indicate okay so rating of disconnect one circuit installation of course, shall have a rating of not less than 15 amperes. Two circuit installation, of course, not less than 30 amperes. One family dwelling, so not of not less than 100 amperes, three wires. Okay, so, and all others. If uh, the feeder or brand circuit disconnecting means, shall have a rating of not less than 60 amperes. So, we have clearance over roadways, walkways, rail, water, and open land. Okay, so consider this one. Go over with this. So we have this. These are the clearances for railways, as we mentioned. We have 8.1, not less than 8.1 meters. So space and uh, ways for the pedestrians are restricted. Traffic 4.4. Water areas not suitable for boating. We have this uh, 5.2 uh, meter. That is our limit. Let us continue here. We have this. Uh, Clearances over building of other structures. This is just a continuation. Just uh, go over with this one. This is for ori uh, horizontal building walls, projections, and windows. This is horizontal. This is for vertical. Okay. So try to go go over with this one. Uh, Article 2.30. Uh, we have the services. The uh, coverage, the scope is uh, for the service conductors and equipment for control and protection of service and their installation equipment so this will be the guiding uh, uh, ideas or discussion for especially for the uh, distribution utilities okay service conductors supplying buildings or other structures shall not pass through the interior of other building or other structures okay so that is very clear that uh, should not uh, uh, pass, no? Like, for example, uh, service conductor installed not to pass through the interior of building. Uh, okay, number one, to supply building number two. Okay. So, it should be, uh, should not, uh, okay, that will supply here. So, this building too should uh, have a separate supply, no? separate supply to the tra from the transformer it will not uh, use the uh, building two here to supply building also uh, building one to supply building two okay so service connectors installed as open connectors or multi-conductor cable with an over overall uh, outer jacket shall have a clearance of not less than nine meters or nine uh, uh, point nine meters or uh, 900 millimeters or three feet from the window. Ok, 
Okay, so we I think we mentioned this one for a while ago, no? So this is our service entrance conductor. Then it should not be less than uh, three feet clearance. Uh, this is our required, no? Okay. So with this one also less than three feet. So it should not be less than three feet. Uh, okay. So anyway, um, for the service conductors here, for the service conductors here, no, that will pass the window, less than three feet is permitted, as long as uh, just uh, pass by here, okay. But of course, your service entrance here is should be uh, three meters away more uh more than three meters away from the window for the service entrance okay okay so next how about vertical clearance the vertical clearance uh, of final uh, final spans above or within 900 millimeter three feet measure horizontally of platforms projections or sur for, uh, uh, surfaces from which they might be reached okay so three feet this one here, no? Not, uh, not less than 3 feet. And uh, not less than uh, 10 feet. 10 feet here. From the, uh, this outside ports. Okay, or any uh, platforms, no? Okay. So, as a support, no? Uh, for overhead, the service for conductor shall not be installed beneath openings through which materials may be moved okay so we have here vegetation support again trees shall not be used for support of overhead service conductors no? so overhead service conductors insulations or covering so we have this individual conductor shall be insulated or covered Okay, so, but of course there is an exception. The grounded conductor of a multi-conductor cable shall be permitted to be bare. So, uh, talking about uh, go, go, going back to uh, going back to uh, uh, grounded conductor, it is permitted to be bare or without insulations, no? Because as maybe we discuss. Uh, we discussed that uh, it it might have or it will have an insulation of green strip uh, stripes and so on, but of course white stripes of gray. But uh, this, uh, but of course it is permitted also that we are going to use a bare conductor for a grounded conductor. So size and rating conductors shall have enough sufficient capacity to carry the current for the load and shall have adequate uh, mechanical strength for our support. For the underground service conductors, exemption uh, grounded conductors shall be permitted to be ins uninsulated. So, bare copper used in a raceway, bare copper for direct boreal, where bare copper is judged for to be suitable for the soil conditions. So, these are the uh, exceptions, no? For underground conductor permitted to be in to be uninsulated. Okay. This is for grounding. No? Aluminum or, or copper clad aluminum without uh, individual insulation or covering used in a raceway or for direct boreal. Cable trays. Cable tray system shall be permitted to support uh, service entrance cables. Drip loops shall be permitted individual conductors to prevent the entrance of moisture. So that it. that's it. That's it, no? Energized parts shall be enclosed so that they will not be exposed to accidental contacts. So, uh, it should be enclosed or guarded, no? So, energized parts that are not enclosed shall be installed on a switchboard, panel board, or control board, and it should be guarded. That is for safety. Disconnecting means, okay, so readily accessible location. Either outside of the building or structure or inside the nearest to the point of entrances of the service conductors or bathrooms. 
We have here, disconnected means shall not be installed in bathrooms. Of course, uh, it might be uh, um, uh, water might uh, get inside with this uh, disconnecting means and it will cause to short circuits. No? So, remote control where a remote control device is used to actuate the service disconnecting means and it is acceptable. Talking about markings, it's uh, device service disconnect uh, shall be permanently marked to identify is our service disconnect. Okay, markings is also important here. Suitable for use, its service disconnect means shall be suitable for the prevailing conditions. Okay, so mention about maximum number of disconnects. Okay, so more or less, um, not more than six switches or sets of circuit breakers. Okay. Uh, mounted in a single enclosure. So power monitor equipment, surge protective device, control circuit of the ground fault uh, protection, and power parable uh, service disconnecting means. Okay, so that's very clear. More, not more than six. Its grounded service conductor shall have overload protection, of course. Set of uh, for the ungrounded conductor. Set of fuses must be considered all the fuses required to protect all the ungrounded conductors of a circuit. Okay, location. The service over current device shall be an integral part of the service disconnecting means for uh, or shall be located immediately uh, adjacent thereto. Lock service over current devices. Uh, service over current devices are locked or sealed or not readily accessible and shall be of lower ampere rating when the service uh, over current devices. Okay, so protection specific circuits. An automatic over current device that protects service conductors supplying only a specific load. Ground fault protection of equipment. Okay, so we have these provisions. Uh, ground fault protection of equipment, uh, it should be solidly grounded while electric services of more than 150 volts to ground but not exceeding 600 volts. Okay, the maximum seating of the ground fault protection shall be 1,200 amperes. For fuses, uh, if it is employed, shall be capable of interrupting any current higher than the interrupting capacity of the switch. Okay, so it is very important. Ser service entrance conductors. Service entrance conductors shall not be smaller than 14 mm squared unless in multi-conductor cable conductor. Multi-conductor cable shall not be smaller than 8 uh, mm squared. 8.0 mm squared. Okay, so um, the smaller conductor for the service entrance should not be less than 8.0 mm squared. Or that is uh, number 8 AWG or 3.2 meter diameter protection or millimeter diameter protection uh, requirements. The protective device shall be capable of detecting and interrupting all values of current in axis of its trip sitting or melting point that can uh, occur at least uh, at its location. Okay, metal enclosed switch gear, uh, that's very important to pr for protection also. Consists of a substantial metal structure and a sheet metal enclosure were installed over a combustible floor. Okay, so that is our for our protection. Over current protection, that is Article 2.4. Okay, so the scope of this Article 2.4, we have here this, uh, provide the general requirements for over current protection. And over current uh, protective devices, not more than 600 volts, and for more than 600 volts nominal. So, provided to open the circuit if the current could reaches a value that will cause an excessive or dangerous temperature in conductors or conductor insulation. So, of course, that is the purpose and to, uh, to is to protect our uh, conductors and any other load in the system so we need to have this overcurrent protective device so as for definition 
Okay, current limiting over current protective device. This reduces the current flowing in the voltage circuit to a magnitude uh, substantially less than that obtainable in the, cir the same circuit. Or top conductor has over current protection ahead of its point of supply that exceeds the value permitted for similar conductors that are protected as described in protection of these conductors. Okay, so protection with power loss hazard. So conductor overload protection shall not be required where the interruption of the circuit would create a hazard such as in material handling magnetic uh, magnet circuit. No? So small conductors, 15 amperes for 2.0 mm squared, 20 amperes for 3.5 uh, mm squared, and uh, 30 amperes for 5.5 mm squared. For, this is for copper. So 15 uh, amperes for point, uh, 3.5 for small conductors and uh, 25 amperes for 5.5 for aluminum no these are for aluminum so a while ago that is for copper and this is for aluminum so if we will be using aluminum 15 amperes for 3.5 and uh, 25 amperes for 5.5 mm squared Okay, so house ranges, cooking appliance, and other uh, loads, then uh, go back to this table 2.10, 0.2.1. Okay, for fixture cable wire, location in circuits, and reduction in amper, capacity, size of busways, and so on. Protection of flexible cords, flexible cables, and uh, fixture wires. So we have the go back to the ampacities, brand circuit over card devices. Uh, we mentioned this one already. Supply cord, listed of appliance, portable lamps. Okay, so extension cords, spelled uh, symbol, uh, symbol extension cord sheets. Standard ampere ratings for uh, fuses and fixed trip circuit breakers. So I think this is available in the market. But, uh, we have the for fuses and the fixed trip uh, circuit breaker sitting. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and so on and so forth. It might be, we have uh, an available maybe up to 6,000 amperes. Restricted access, adjustable trip circuit breakers, removable and sealable covers over the adjusting means. Bolted equipment and the enclosure doors. Bolted uh, circuit breakers is uh, more advisable especially if we have a bigger rating of our fuses and breakers so use uh, bolted uh, equipment enclosure also lock uh, doors accessible only to qualified personnel okay so this is just uh, a what you call this one uh, an illustration a drawing or a picture of uh, this adjustable trip circuit breakers Okay, shall be permitted to be connected in parallel where they are factory symbol in parallel and listed as devices. For thermal devices, which uh, they, which will uh, sense the temperature, permitted to protect uh, motor brand circuit connectors that uh, from overload if protected in accordance with this overload relays. Okay, so to protect our motor, for example, our rotating uh, machine, uh, in overheating, overheat, then uh, we have this protection. Supplementary overcurrent protection used for luminaires, appliances, and other equipment or for ex internal circuits and components equi equipment. Then we have also this what we call electrical system coordination. This is very important also in the system. It should be uh, coordinated where an orderly shutdown is required to minimize the hazards to personnel and equipment. There should be a coordination. So this is just uh, <clears throat> overcurrent. This is an illustration having overcurrent protection without coordination here. So uh, this is open. Uh, this is open here, and they will be affected. And this will not be affected because this is the grounding system. Unnecessary power loose. Okay, so if it, uh, we have this overcurrent protection with coordination, so um, several um, 
point in the system if there will be fault in this part here will not be affected okay so otherwise uh, there will be greater advantage if we will be using uh, electrical system coordination a fuse or an overcurrent trip unit of a circuit breaker shall be connected in series with its ungrounded conductor okay so circuit breaker as overcurrent device multiplier multi-wire band circuit permitted as the protection for its ungrounded conductor of multi-wire band circuits that serve only single phase line to neutral loads okay so uh, broad circuit is applicable this time and uh, advisable okay so talking about circuit breaker grounded single phase and uh, three phase direct uh, or dc circuits we can use uh, the circuit breaker individual single pole circuit breakers with in the identified handle ties shall be permitted as the protection for its ungrounded conductor so this is just an illustration of this uh, circuit breakers. Closed loop power distribution systems. This is uh, part of uh, distribution system, distribution utilities. So listed devices that provide equivalent overcurrent protection is in closed loop. So this is uh, closed looping, so that uh, there will be a continuous supply of or power, okay, in the system. Okay, it is. Uh, Permitted as a substitute for fuse or circuit breaker. So listed device. No? So similar changes shall be permitted to be made in the size of the grounded conductor because of both its problems. Location in or on premises. It should be accessibility. Uh, consider accessibility is considered. So it should be accessible. It should be. It should have. Uh, it should co uh, consider also. The occupant or the occupancy, the type of occupancy, not exposed to physical damage, not in a vicinity of easily ignitable material. Okay, so it should not be located in ignitable material, not, not located in bathrooms, not located in over steps. Okay, so enclosures here is advised also to protect from damage, no physical damage. And of course, to protect also our personnel. Okay, disconnecting and guarding. So, each circuit containing fuse can be independently disconnected from the source power. Okay, arcing or suddenly moving parts. Okay, careful also this one. And uh, fuses and circuit breakers shall be located or shielded so that persons will not be born or otherwise uh, injured. Okay, if we have sudden, uh, suddenly moving parts, handles or levers of circuit breakers and similar parts that may, may, may move suddenly in such a way that persons in the vicinity are likely to be injured by being struck by them shall be guarded or isolated. That is protection for user. Huh? So, talking about plug fuses, holders and adapters. Circuit not exceeding 125 volts between conductors. At least we have to use the maximum voltage. Circuit supplied by having a system having a grounded neutral point where the line to neutral voltage does not exceed 150 volts. We need a marking. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, let's go back here. So we have this uh, configuration. Oh, hexagonal configuration. So plug fuses of 15 amperes and lower rating shall be identified for by hexagonal configurations of the window cup of other permanent part to distinguish them from fuses of different amper ratings. Okay, uh, this is for identification anyway. Plug fuses, fuse, uh, fuse holders and adapters shall have, and, uh, shall have no exposed and energized parts after fuse or fuses and adapters have been installed. So, no exposed energized parts. It should be covered, protected, or put it in a panel board. Screw shell of a plug type of fuse holder shall be connected to the load side of the circuit. Okay, we have this Edison-based fuses. Okay, then replacement only. Plug fuses of the Edison-based type shall be used only for replacements in existing installation 
where there is no evidence of overfishing or tampering. So re replace it directly. A few soldiers of the Edison base type uh, shall be installed only when where they are made to accept type S fuses they used for adapters. So we have this type S fuse. Type S fuse shall be classified at not more the not over 125 volts, 0 to 15 amperes, 16 to 20 amperes, and 21 to 30 amperes. That is S time. Okay. So non interchangeable uh, S type uh, fuse. The uh, this shall be designed so that they cannot be used in any fuse holder. So it is not uh, other fuse holder. This this this, this is a specific uh, design for this uh, fuse. Okay. So this is talking about Edison based type uh, fuse holders or type S fuse only. Non tamperable. Interchangeability, dimensions of type S fuse holders and adapters shall be standardized to permit its interchangeability regardless of the manufacturer. We have also the cartridge fuse and fuse holders. Okay, so maximum voltage, 300 uh, volt type, cartridge uh, fuse, cartridge fuses and fuse holders of the 300 volt type shall be permitted. Okay, shall be permitted. So, circuit not exceeding 300 volts between conductors. Single phase line to neutral circuit supplied from three phase, three wire solidly grounded. So, it could be uh, usable. Inter non interchangeable uh, 0 to 6000 ampere cartridge. Okay, so fuse holders for current limiting fuse shall not permit insertion of fuses that are not current limiting. Marking is important. Uh, example is ampere uh, rating, voltage rating, the interrupting rating, where uh, of other than 10,000 uh, amperes. Current limiting applicable. The name of the trademark of the manufacturer. So that is for cartridge fuse. Circuit break, uh, circuit breakers methods of operation. Circuit breakers shall be thrift free and capable of being closed and opened by manual operations. And of course, it could be operated also by um, remote, no? Circuit breakers shall clearly indicate whether they are in the open, off, or closed on position. Not similar with the fuse that you cannot determine if it is already busted or disconnected or in uh, off position or open circuit position. Okay, that is uh, one thing, uh, disadvantage of the fuse. But the circuit breaker, you can... Uh, you can detect, you can determine that this is in open position or off position if uh, uh, it is uh, the position itself of the lever of that uh, circuit breaker. non tamperable a circuit breaker shall be of such design that any alteration of its strip point, it is, cannot be altered, otherwise it will be damaged. Okay, so it will have, it has a durable and visible markings. And uh, location, circuit breaker stated at 100 amperes or less and 600 volts or less shall have the tamper, ampere rating molded stamp H of zero similarly marked in their handles or scutcheon areas. Okay, so that is for okay, supervised industrial installations, exclusive... Uh, uh, for manufacturing or process controlling control activities. Location, feather and branch circuit conditions. So, conductors shall be protected at the point the conductors shall receive their supply as permitted in 240.21 overcard protection for conductors. That is table. Okay, so transformer secondary conductors of separately derived system. So the length of the secondary conductors does not exceed 3, 30 meters of the transformer primary overcurrent uh, devices or rating of or seating that does not exceed 150%. Okay, so conductors protected by a differential relay with a trip seating equal to or less than the conductor capacity. So those are the protection that you can find in the pool. 
or in transformer side. Okay, so overload protection for the transformer. Uh, there shall be no more than six overcurrent devices group in any one location. We mentioned this one already. Outside feather taps. Okay, the connectors are protected from physical damage in approved uh, manner. Top conductors are installed outdoors of a building or structure except at the point of load terminations. Otherwise, in load terminations, it will be it should be in in a box. The cover current uh, device for the conductor is an integral part of a disconnecting means or shall be located in immediate adjacent thereto. Series ratings. Uh, circuit breakers shall meet the requirement specified or tested combinations so we should have to test for the rating of these installations so uh, we have to test the line side overcurrent device load side circuit breakers okay with the equipment such as switchboards and panel boards okay so motor country contribution series rating shall not be Used where motors are connected in the load side of the higher rated overcurrent uh, device on the line side of the lower rated overcurrent device. Some of the motor full load currents exceeds 1% of the interrupting, uh, interrupting rating of the lower rated circuit breaker. For overcurrent protection over 600 volts, okay, uh, so we are talking now with these three phase circuits. So we have a minimum of three overcurrent relay elements operated from three current transformers. So otherwise, if you have this three-phase system, it should be protected by a three overcurrent relay elements or circuit breakers. Fuses, a fuse shall be connected in series with its ungrounded conductor if you will be using fuse. Okay, capable of detecting and interrupting all values of current that are that can occur at their location in excess in excess of their trip setting or melting point. The conductor use shall be coordinated to prevent damaging or dangerous temperatures in in conductors or conductor insulation under short circuit condition. Okay, so more or less uh, we are just. Uh, uh, some of these things were discussed already. We discussed this one, no? But anyway, so just uh, continue reading. Feather tops, like for example, feather tops, character top, or at all feeders shall be permitted to be protected by the feeder over current device, where the, that over current device also protects the top uh, conductors. Now, uh, let's uh, discuss next uh, grounding and bonding. So um, the um, almost first part of these uh, discussions we have we talk about grounding system, grounding conductor. At this time, we have to go over with this grounding and bonding system now. So for the definition, supply side bonding jumper. It is a conductor installed on the supply side of a service that ensures electrical conductivity between metal parts required to be electrically connected. So, uh, any intentional construction, that is a uh, fault current path, low impedance, electrically conductive path design and intended to carry current under ground fault condition. Grounding is the intentional connection of uh, current carrying conductor to ground or something that serves in place of ground. Okay, so intentional no? connection. Okay, so where a system operates ungrounded, it does not have an intentional grounded circuit conductor. But equipment uh, grounding through the use of an equipment grounding conductor is required. So if it is not uh, intentionally or it is not necessary to be grounded, um, but of course we should have to use other means, okay, other conductor to ground so that uh, the the, that uh, equipment will be safe for any surge. There are two basic reasons for grounding. To limit the voltage caused by lightning or by accident contact. Okay. Or uh, number two, to stabilize the voltage under normal operating conditions. 
okay, normal operating condition. So we we need to ground. Otherwise, there will be a, a normal, an abnormal surge of current in the system. That any equipment connected to the system will be subject only to the to that potential voltage. Alternating current systems of less than 50 volts. If the transformer supply, okay, so trans supply exceeds 150 volts to ground, then alternating current system 50 volts to 1,000. The maximum voltage to ground in a ungrounded connector does not exceed 150 volts. Okay, so does not exceed 150 volts. Okay, so number two, three-phase four-wire Y, the neutral conductor is used as a circuit conductor. Three-phase four-wire delta, the midpoint of one phase winding is used as a circuit conductor. So we have these illustrations of the line-to-line, three-phase line-to-line or three-phase delta. So we have that one. Electrical system used to supply industrial electric furnaces, furnaces or melting, refining, and tempering, because we are using here 500 or 50 volts to less than 1,000 volts. Okay, uh, not required to be grounded. Okay. So, by the way, markings here is also very important, especially for the ungrounded system. Circuits for electric cranes operating over combustible fibers. Okay, it should not be not be grounded. Circuits in healthcare or facilities. Circuits for equipment within electrolytic cell working zone, and secondary circuits of lighting systems. Secondary circuits. Those are the uh, not required to be grounded. Okay, circuits not to be grounded. Circuits to for electric cranes operating over combustible fibers, circuits in healthcare facilities, and uh, so on. So, so, this is just an illustration. Grounding system supplied AC system. So, connection number one, connection shall be made uh, at any accessible point from the load end of the service drop or service lateral to and uh, including the terminal bus. Okay, so this is just an illustration outdoor transformers at least one additional grounding con connections is to be made from the grounded service connector to the electrode so we have this one no? our transformer load side grounding connections so connected to ground on the load side of the service deconnecting means except as otherwise permitted in this article Okay, so grounded uh, conductors both brought to serve to service equipment. So this is a main bonding jumper. We have the main bonding jumper here. Okay, so exceptions where two or more service disconnecting means are located in the single assembly. Okay, so jumper materials. So we have an illustration here. Grounding electrode system. All grounding electrodes as described in that are present at each building or structure serve shall be bonded together and uh, to form the grounding electrode system. Okay, so permitted metal frame of structure. Uh, at least structural metal member that is in direct contact with the uh, earth of 4, 3 meter. Concrete in encased electrode. So, shall consist of at least 6 meter bare or zinc galvanized or other electrically connected or conductive coated with this. Uh, it could be also bare copper wire, no? Conduct not smaller than 4 AWG. Okay, electrodes permitted for grounding. So, grounding ring at least 6 meter. Bare copper conductor not smaller than 2 EWG or American wire gauge. Rod uh, and pipe electrodes shall not be less than 2.44 meters or 8 feet uh, length and shall consist of the following materials. So, these are the different materials. Plate electrodes. 
shall expose not less than 0.186 meters squared or 2 square foot square feet of surface of surface to exterior soils so these are the illustrations or the picture of these uh, connectors okay so enclosure raceway service cables connection metal enclosure raceways for service conductors and equipment shall be connected to the grounded system conductor but of course we have these exceptions so metal elbow that is uh, installed in an underground uh, non-metallic raceway and is isolated from possible contact by a minimum cover of 450 millimeter anyway this is just an illustration so uh, how you are going to uh, how you are going to uh, install our uh, uh, conductors no? using this uh, PVC or uh, we have this uh, distance length so bonding bonding shall be provided where necessary to ensure electrical continuity and the capacity to conduct safely any fault current likely to be imposed so this is how it is bonded here okay and abandoning services so it is uh, uh, we have here this is the bonding jumper no the bonding jumper to the body of your panel board okay so we have here bonding to the end of this metallic raceway so we have also this uh, grounding electrode Okay, so this is for multi uh, bonding or multi panel, no? Multi uh, multi uh, uh, jumper or bonding. Okay, this is just an il illustration of picture bonding other systems, rounding weeds. We have the listed inter-system bonding. Okay, or listed, no? So bonding other systems specific specifically for the cable TV. So this is how it is abandoned. Okay, as uh, emphasized here. Equipment grounding and uh, equipment grounding conductors. Equipment conductor conducted by cord and plug. Anyway, as I've said a while ago, this is uh, discussed already. Some of the discussion here or terms here were discussed already in our previous in. Uh, grounded conductor okay so in residential occupancies refrigerators freezers air conditioners should be grounded clothes washing drying dishwashing other uh, washing materials or uh, devices or uh, appliances or equipment should be grounded handheld motor operated tools should be also grounded motor printed uh, appliances the following types heads clippers lawn mowers Snow blower should be grounded. Okay, so I think uh, we'll just go over with this one. We need to have this grounding system. We use this uh, green colored uh, conductor insulation here, but of course, as we discuss, um, we can use a white or gray color strip stripe. No. Okay, methods of uh, equipment grounding here, connecting receptacles, grounding materials, or terminal box. So we have here, use this uh, screw for your grounding system, grounding connection. Surface mounted box, direct metal to metal contact, uh, contact devices or yokes, screw, supporting screws establish the grounded circuit. Floor boxes should be grounded. Instrument meters and release instrument transformer circuits okay, should be also be grounded where the temporary windings are connected to circuit of 300 volts or more um, to ground and shall be con grounded irrespective of voltage. We have an exceptions here, no? So, so we have an exceptions here. Cir uh, exception number one: circuits where the primary windings are connected to circuits of less than 1000 volts with no live parts or wiring exposed so no live parts anyway so 
you can uh, it is exp ex uh, what you call this one um, exempted here. Exception number two: current transformer secondary is connected in a three-phase delta. Our delta connection or configuration shall not be required to be grounded. So if it is the delta connected transformers, secondary side is not connect, uh, grounded. Okay, so let's uh, proceed to search resistors over 1000 volts. Qualification, we have this, the rating. The rating of a search resistor shall be equal to or greater than the maximum continuous operating voltage at the point of application. Silicon carbide types, the type of silicon carbide type surge arrestor shall be not less than 125% of rating specified in uh, A or rating. Installation. Okay, so the location, uh, use is not permitted, surge of uh, connections, grounded uh, service conductors, grounded electrode conductors, grounding electrode for the service. This uh, we are going to connect our uh, grounding rods. Okay or our uh, surge arrester. So, conductors for the surge arrester, the conductor between the surge arrester and the line and surge arrester and the grounding connection shall not be smaller than 14 mm copper or aluminum clad. Okay, so not smaller. Metal interconnection, additional grounding connection, uh, spark gap or device, ungrounded or unigrounded the primary system, ungrounded. So we are also, we have also here the uh, surge protective device or SPD. Okay. What are the surge protective devices and how it is rated and how, what are the specification of this SPD, especially if it is uh, 1000 volts or less. So this will discuss the general requirements uh, such as installation requirements, connection requirements for surge protective devices or SPD or permanently installed in uh, premises wiring systems or 1000 volts. Okay, what is SPD? Are designed to protect against transient surge condition such as lightning. Okay, so the location SPD should be located indoors and outdoors and shall be made inaccessible to unqualified persons. Of course, uh, this is for lightning and we cannot measure lightning here. So it's usually uh, the person should be protected against this. So the conductors used shall connect the SPD to the line or bus and to the grounded shall not be any longer than necessary and shall avoid the necessary bends. So type 1 to connect SPD shall be connected to the supply side and it shall be connected at least one of the following. Grounded service conductors, grounding electrode, grounding electrode for the service and uh, type 2 okay, is the main protection system for all low voltage electrical systems installed uh, in such electrical switchboards it prevents the spread of over voltage and electrical installation and protects the load type 3 shall be installed in the load side of the branch circuit over current protection up to the equipment service or equipment serve or the load then uh, load discharge capacity and mandatorily be installed as supplement for type 2 SPD Okay, so let's uh, discuss also uh, protection against lightning. I think this is the last uh, topic here. Lightning protection system is complete system of terminals, conductors, ground terminals, interconnecting conductors, arresters, and other connectors or fittings required to complete the system. The system that protects against lightning. Air terminal, it is, this is a device capable of drawing. Lightning discharge in preference to vulnerable, vulnerable parts of the protected areas. Banding is also required here. This is a connection to accomplish the electrical continuity. You have to band, uh, and, and we, we sh I showed already uh, how this uh, banding, connecting, or banding conductors is uh, um, had, had been made. So conductors portion of the lightning system decide to carry light lightning discharge so you have to determine the size of the conductor and fastening also it is an attachment of to secure conductor of the uh, structure flammable b-force okay so uh, the b-force given from a flammable liquid at or above the plus point 
ground terminal portion of the system serving to bring the lightning protection system into electrical contact with the earth. Okay, so high-rise building, which is a building over 23 meters in height, and uh, metal body of conductance or or above the uh, ave or flat roof, no? the ave or flat roof level that are subject to direct lightning stroke. Metal body inductance, metal uh, objects load located within 2,000 or 2. A 2,000 millimeters or 2 meters of a conductor subject to build up of uh, potential okay, voltage. So, protection for ordinary buildings, protection for miscellaneous structures and special occupancies, protection also for heavy duty stocks, protection for structure containing flammable liquids and gases. So, protection for ordinary buildings, materials, copper, copper alloys, aluminum. So, prevention of the deterioration. Okay, so protected by continuous hot dip of the lid extending at least 6 meters below the top of the chimney. Okay, so uh, air terminal shall be, uh, shall be provided for all parts of the structure that are likely to be damaged by lightning. Okay, design and support. Height, tip not less than 254 millimeter above the object for 600 millimeter interval. Tip not less than 600 millimeter above the object for 7,600 millimeter interval. So these are some of the design and uh, support. So you have the supports, the ornaments, and terminal of roofs on roofs, lower roofs, flat or gently sloping roofs. You can use that. Okay, dormers, ropes with uh, uh, intermediate uh, ridges, irregular, irregular uh, ropes, rope lines. Okay, so um, open areas in flat ropes, domb, domb or curved st uh, structures or ch and chimney. Talking about conductors, shall interconnected, interconnect all air terminals and shall form a towy path from its or terminal, horizontal, or downward. Preventing packets, okay, shall maintain a horizontal or downward uh, course free from U and V packets. Gradual bends, not formed 90 degrees, indeed, in, included angle or have ridges to bend to 203 millimeter. Down conductors, average distance shall not exceed 30 meters. Protect down conductors shall be uh, protected for a minimum distance of 1,800 or 1 1.8 meters above grid. Grounding. So, grounding terminals, if it is rods, not less than 12.7 millimeter diameter and uh, 2.4 millimeter long. It is copper clad steel, solid copper or stainless steel. Uh, ground rod clamps shall make a content with the ground Rod for a distance of 38. Okay, so um, okay, protection for miscellaneous structures and special occupancies, mass, spires, flagpoles, and others require one air terminal, down conductors, and ground terminal. But for continuous metals, only ground terminal is required. Tower and tanks. Required bonding to ground terminals. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. That uh, ends our uh, discussion here. So um, I hope that you learn many things.